This post-apocalyptic podcast contains some foul language, dark humor, and depictions of well-warranted violence. You have been warned. Proceed through the vault door at your own risk. Independence Day. And of course, Independence Day means freedom for everyone in the United States. Well, now, some of you kids are going to be seeing our, our July 4th show here a little bit later in the month. But you know how to actually, every day is a day to celebrate the freedom of, of living in America. So how about your song, Howdy? What do you say? Oh, good. Well, you know, kids, here's a song that all of you kids sing in school. And why don't you join in me with singing it? Because, gosh, it's, it's such a privilege to sing our wonderful song, America. My country, tears of the sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every Independence Day 2102. This is it. The very last Independence Day we'll be celebrating in Vault 76. In three months' time, that door opens and our big adventure begins. But before it does, we're making this final 4th of July something special. Our electronics and applied robotics teacher, Mr. Simmons, has been setting up our very own radio station. He and Hugo Warren have been working on a mobile broadcasting platform that can be set up after Reclamation Day to start broadcasting all over Appalachia again. The overseer gave them permission to do a test broadcast and also cover some of the fun events we have today. The big parade, the ball game on sub-level three, even the hot dog eating contest in the atrium. Jake and I will be on the air doing some fun skits and stuff. As excited as I am, Chad needed extra credit to pass, so he volunteered to help with the broadcast. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Happy 4th in the good old U.S. of A. Okay, Hugo, check the frequency there on the volume unit meter. We should be clocked in about 670 kilohertz. Ah, check and double check. 670 kilohertz. Okay. Remember, the board is finicky, so be gentle with it. All this is still untested. I'm going to check the transmitter one last time. Yeah, running a direct feed from a fusion generator into the platform with an extension cord made of garden hose, 50 feet of aluminum foil, and 5 gallons of Nuka-Cola. Quantum isn't exactly broadcasting standard. It was better than the high-voltage line we made out of human hair. I'll be back in five. Remember... We sign on in five minutes. Hey, hey, Hugo. Ready for our big debut? We'll see. As long as you don't sneeze, this thing should keep it together. Did you get the program finalized? Yes, indeed. We have old man Foster who will be kicking things off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Hopefully, he remembered to put his teeth in. We'll switch over to Jake remotely, who will be on level six reporting on the parade. We'll have the Mr. Handy singing the National Anthem, followed by the Patriots' Picnic, the Declaration of Independence skit, Lionel and his tap-dancing rad roaches, yada yada yada. And Chad? Look, let's just give him something simple. He can put those biceps to use and be a mic stand. 
Okay. Don't freak out. <sighs> what? Chad found one of the old tricentennial vault boy mascot heads in the store. I mean, so? At least it's patriotic. And that's all he's wearing. He painted stars and stripes on his tidy whities Does this mean we have to stand and salute? No. It's... it'll be fine. Hey, ladies. Salute my shorts. No. Hey, uh, you guys get me up there? No, we can't hear you, dude. Is this thing on? Ah, watch the board, you moron. Hey, kids. Is this where I sing the songs? Oh, my God, are you drunk? It's Enderpants Day. Don't sass talk me. I love this guy. What's going on up there, guys? Nothing. It'll be fine. Uh, Mr. Foster, let's head into the recording booth, okay? You... you want to leave that bottle in here, or...? I fought for this bottle in the Battle of Anchorage, you little shit. I earned it. Come on, old dude. Let's get you ready. Give me some of that. We need to get going. Hugo, you there? Yeah, go ahead. I've got problems down here. Hose sprung a leak. We're not gonna get a clean energy transfer, so I'll have to patch it and keep an eye on it. You kids, go ahead. Oh great, no supervision. It's fine, fine. We go live in 30 seconds. Chad, just get him to sing to the script there. Chill, dude. Remember the words of Abraham Lincoln. My best friend is an old man who will give me a swig of his moonshine I haven't tasted. Okay. In five, four, three, two, one. Good day, Vault 76, and happy, happy Independence, Independence day. day. I'm your host for today's 4th of July festivities, Hugo Warren. And with me today is Simon Rex here in the booth. This is the inaugural broadcast of WV76, made possible by Mr. Simmons, myself, and Nuka Cola Victory. Yes, Nuka Cola Victory, a sparkling citrus blast of patriotic pleasure in every fizzy sip. In honor of our final 4th of July here in Vault 76, the Overseer has cracked open a few cases of this that she's secretly been hiding all these years. Grab a bottle in the atrium today before the parade. We also have a very special treat today. Major Thomas Foster, former envoy to General Constantine Chase, who was five times decorated his role in the liberation of Anchorage, Alaska. He'll be kicking off our festivities with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> what? We're ready when you are, sir. Oh my god, his dentures fell out. You got this, dude. Here. One minute in, and this is a disaster. Is... Is he asleep, or is he having a stroke? Mr. Foster! Come on, dude. Let's finish off that moonshine. Thank you, Mr. Foster, for that dispirited open. See what I did there? D don't do that. Now we head down to our reporter in the hallway, Jacob Hayes, who is at the start of the 4th of July parade. 
Thank you, Hugo. This year's theme is America the Exceptional, representing over 300 years of red, white, and blue. At the head of the procession is Belvedere, our janitorial Mr. Handy, who is playing the first American, the Newton of Electricity, Benjamin Franklin. Good day, fine Americans. I not only was one of the greatest founding fathers, in addition to inventing my own alphabet, a stove, and discovered electricity. But truth be told, I do love tarty ladies with big backsides. But if I am to be remembered for one thing, let it be this quote and not the bodies that were discovered in my basement. They that can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Wise words indeed. I read your essay in the archives. Fart proudly. It was breathtaking. Yes, indeed. I live by my 13 virtues. And with that, the parade procession is off. Approaching us now is the engineering team who is festively dressed as the Pilgrims, the very first people to set foot on this blessed land. They escaped oppression and met some friendly natives who helped them out. Some beautiful costumes there, Jake. What? What's that coming up behind them? It uh, appears to be a rock made of paper mache. Hey, hey, Vault Bros. Chad, get back up here. What are you supposed to be? I'm the Provincetown, Massachusetts Rock, and the Nina, Penta, and Santa Claus slammed into repeatedly when they landed. See? My backside's damaged. I mean, none of that is accurate. Also, highly inappropriate. Chad, get back up to the control room. That's an order. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Lame. Oh, here's something special. The security and administrative staff dressed up in the festive period costumes of the Continental Congress. There's Thomas Jefferson, John Hancock, even Button Gwinnett. Love me that Button Gwinnett. And now we have some kids from the 10th grade class dressed up as the Minutemen. Those iconic Massachusetts protectors. Oh, what happened there? Looks like a few of them tripped, Hugo. Well, I sure hope they don't need our help. Tell them to move right along. I'm sure they can figure it out for themselves, needy no good anyway. Oh, look, there's that amazing 10-foot-long flag hand-stitched by the Vault Wives Auxiliary. Beautifully done. Whoa, look out. Last but not least is the Excavators Corps, riding around on their pint-sized Corvegas, sporting their traditional fezzes. Folks, they train all year for this, working on delicate figure-eight maneuvers and loop de loop at great speed. Wow, they sure fly on those pint-sized Corvegas. They sure do. Ah, whoops. Looks like a wheel came off. Fire suppression teams are on the way. Moving right along, we have a Mr. Handy who has been specially programmed for a soaring rendition of our national anthem. If everyone everywhere will rise. Yeah. 
what in the actual... Thank you, Mr. Handy. Who programmed that? Well, he was off key, so I fixed him. Epic. (laughs) Right. We're now going to the Patriots picnic, which has commenced in the atrium. Jake, how you doing? Scorched but breathing. We rolled out our best fake grass and have picnic blankets all set up. Come on down for fried chicken, fresh cut watermelon, all the burgers and deviled eggs you can eat. I'm heading over now to the annual hot dog eating contest. Oh, Mr. Simmons is there. Yes, indeed. Power issue's all set, finally. I'll be judging the contest this afternoon. We have some delicious preserved atomic mare wieners up here. The nation's most well-known purveyor of hot dogs before the war that had a unique atomic curing process for adding flavor. They're steamy and ready to go. In this corner, we have our returning champion, Moose Miller. The king is back, baby. This little wafy lady ain't got nothing on me. I'm a three-year reigning champion, and she's going down. I've been preparing all week for this, preparing my throat for all these wieners. Ha <laughs> ha dude, I bet you have. Shut up, Chad. And in this corner, we have Marianne Belts, an unexpected rival and president of the General Atomics fan club here in the vault. Why, thank you, Mr. Simmons. Hi everyone, I'm Marianne Belts, and I've taken some special training to prepare for this battle. I also wrote a little song. Oh, I wish I were an Atomic Meyer wiener. That is what I truly love to be. As if I were an Atomic Meyer wiener, everyone would be in love. Oh, everyone would be in love. Everyone would be in love with me. Moose dude. Can you hear me? She wants to be a wiener. I know, bro. Okay, that's enough. Right. Hands behind your backs. Mouths at the ready. When I ring the bell, begin. (coughs) Begin. And they're off. Moose has an early lead. I've never seen anything like it. He's savaging those wieners. But little Marianne seems to be going steadily one after another. Maybe slow and steady could win this race. More! Give me more! Let's go! Dude, you're totally wolfing those wieners. (coughs) Bro, shut up! Yes, while those wieners are quite delicious, they do pack a little dose of residual radiation. That may in fact be taxing Moose's system at the rate he's pounding those away. More, please! These are delicious! It looks like her jaw is distending somehow. More! Come on! What... What's she doing? Ooh, bad luck for Moose. It looks like the residual radiation from the hot dogs is causing some sort of reptilian mutation. Yes, she appears to be taking on characteristics of the python or boa constrictor. Yeah, okay, she's completely unhinged her jaw now and just swallowed 15 at once. Can we get a ruling from the judge? I mean, mutation is an expected outcome of radiation exposure. I'll allow it. Fifteen seconds left on the clock. Oh, God! Oh, I'm gonna be sick! I'm still so hungry. Um, what? Ah! Someone! Help! And it looks like Marianne is attempting to swallow Moose's head. What in the actual fuck is going on right now? And time! The winner is Marianne Belts, who hit a total of 49 wieners, plus an additional 34 as she is attempting to swallow Moose. Security, let's get some rat away and tranquilize gun in here.
As we tuck into that delicious Patriots picnic, the Vault 76 players now present a mini radio historical by yours truly, the spirits of 1776. Hugo Warren is Thomas Jefferson, Simon Rex is John Hancock, Chad Johnson is Samuel Adams, Belvedere is Benjamin Franklin, Jacob Hayes is George Washington, Mr. Simmons and John Dickinson, and Betsy Wilson as Betsy Ross. We open in the ruins of the Capitol Wasteland as the ghosts of our forefathers teach us the story of America. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with a certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Why, hello there. I'm George Washington. That really is a great sentence, isn't it? Why, it's Thomas Jefferson. But everyone thought you were pretty great when you wrote that. I'm Samuel Adams, and I love beer. Chad, that's not your line. You don't come in till page two. Right. Um, <clears throat> my bad, uh, Vault fam. Remember, Vault 76 high school football rules. Uh, hmm. So did you think that sentence up all by yourself? No, I do not. I was not trying to say anything new. I was expressing the American mindset. But let me take you back to where it all began. Uh, where are we now? The Second Continental Congress. The year is 1776. For over a year, the members of the Second Continental Congress watched as the presence of British soldiers in the colonies increased and tensions boiled to a breaking point. Citizens of the colonies began demanding that the delegates discuss the idea of becoming independent of Great Britain. Delegates, delegates, I am John Hancock. Please be seated. <laughs> Classic. Shh. As president of the Second Continental Congress, I would like to begin today's proceedings with the topic of declaring independence from Great Britain. Chad. Chad, that's your line. Oh, uh... Line? Here, here. I agree. Oh, right. Uh, could I get another line? We can't let King George III and the British Parliament continue to limit our rights. Good job, dude. These are your lines. You're Sam Adams? Oh, I, I thought I was just supposed to drink beer. Boys, back on script. Think of the consequences. Samuel. Can our country survive if we declare independence? Will we be able to trade with other countries and defend our borders? What would you suggest, Mr. Dickinson? Your name's Dick, dude. I propose we continue working with the British government to bring back the good old days, the life we had before the French and Indian War. These taxes and the rest of this mess, we can be at peace once more. Oh, my line? The days of peace are over, dude. We have to shoot those tea-drinking tools. Our people want it. They read Tom Paine's Come On Something and are ready to fight. I would like to speak. Ah, yes, our iconic Benjamin Franklin. I agree with Samuel Adams. We have tried to find a peaceful solution. Have you forgotten the Olive Branch petition, Mr. Dickinson? Have you ever taken an air bath? Every morning, I would sit in my open first floor window in the nude. That's not in the script. I have not forgotten the olive branch petition. I had to edit the petition before it even left our hands. Jefferson's language was too harsh. Even after you edited my draft, John, the king refused to accept the olive branch petition. What does that tell you? The good old days are over. On June 28, 1776, the Committee of Five submitted the final draft to the Second Continental Congress. On July 2nd, the Continental Congress held a vote and approved the Declaration of Independence. It was released to the colonies on July 4th, 1776, the day we celebrate as the birth of a new nation. 
That nation needed a flag, and so I paid a visit to the home of George Ross to meet his niece, Betsy. Why, General George Washington. Hey, niece. I'm George Ross. Chad, you're not in this scene. Chad, get off the mic. Georgie here needed something sewn. And you did such a great job on my underwear, I thought you'd do a great job making a flag. Uh, sure. What can I help you with, General Washington? Uh, we need a flag to give the people a visual symbol of the new, free, and independent nation that is being formed. For this reason, I'm asking you if you can sew the first American flag. And can you make me a sandwich, babe? I'm starving. Shut up, Chad. I would be honored to sew this flag, General Washington. Come back in a few days. And so we did. Betsy altered our original design, making five-pointed stars instead of... Chad, get your hands off my ass. The four-pointed stars we had drawn, as well as creating a rectangular flag instead of a square one, red stripes for blood and sacrifice, white stripes for love and peace. We returned the next day. Hey, can you guys turn up the air conditioning? I'm sweating my balls off in here. Well, General Washington, here it is. It's... it's perfect. We have our flag at last. Symbol of our new country. The United States of America. And of the land of the free. This concludes our inaugural broadcast of Alt-76 Friends, but before we go, we have a big final number. Mary Ann Belts will be singing This Land is Our Land with the Vault 76 Orchestra. Oh, she's still sick and stuff from trying to eat moose. I got this. Hit it, fellas. I bought in a special surprise. I found this mini robot prototype hidden in the access panel. God bless my underwear, my very last pair. Stand beside them and guide them so they don't rip or tear. Chad, those aren't the lyrics. That's it, mister. You can forget that extra credit. No, no, teacher dude. Hang on. I have some fireworks and stuff. Let me fire up this robot. He says all kinds of patriotic stuff. Should we cut the mic? Oh, whoops. Every man for themselves. Liberty Prime prototype is online. All systems nominal. Get the fire extinguisher. Mission, the destruction of any and all Chinese communists. Uh, what did he just say? Warning, under attack. Red Chinese menace has infiltrated Vault 76, initiating assault mode. Someone shut that down. Call security. He's going to hit the broadcasting relays. Oh, he hit the relays. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Have a patriotic day. And remember, we shall emerge. This is Kenneth Vigu. This concludes our very first holiday special. We hope to be bringing you more of them in the near future. From all of us here at Chad, a Fallout 76 podcast, we wish you and yours a happy and safe and very patriotic 4th of July.